everyone, uh, welcome back to another development diary. Uh, this video will be a little bit longer because I haven't done one in a while and there's a lot to cover. Um, but in the future, I'm planning on putting out videos more frequently and keeping them shorter. Um, so one of the things I added here is the particle system. Um, the campfire is using it right now. And what it is is it's uh, small images uh, that are used over and over and over again. Um, each one's given a different little velocity, a uh, different color, different rotation, that kind of thing. And it, it creates an, a nice little effect. Um, under the hood, there's no garbage collection. Um, it's it's uh, very efficient in that way. Um, and I, I, th I think it just looks a lot better. Um, the old campfire looked a little bit like a like a flaming bag of dog do sort of. <laughs> um, but this particle system is used in uh, combat spells too. And you'll see those in just a second. Uh, I refined how the lighting and vision system worked. Um, so previously, if you walked up to a building, you couldn't really tell it was a building because you could only see the first block. Um, so I made it so when you're outside, you can see the roof of a building if you walk up to it. Um, so here I'm trying to strike a balance between restricting vision based on what the character would realistically be able to see and giving them enough information to make good decisions and that kind of thing. Because realistically you're not going to be able to see the entirety of a roof of a building if you're standing in front of it. Um, but anyway, I, I, think it, I think it works well. Um, and so I also made it so that the uh, lighting of the walls changes as you move inside. Um, previously it was kind of jarring uh, because uh, the light, uh, the walls would be lit up really brightly um, when you're inside a dark room and it just seemed weird. Um, but I think this worked out pretty well. It's hard to convey a sense of inside versus outside in a 2D game. It's easier in 3D. Um, but the inside versus outside is necessary to convey a sense of shelter, um, which is going to be really important for the gameplay. So at the heart of the gameplay, it's a it's a survival crafting game mixed with an ac action RPG. Um, so you can see a little skeleton over here at the window. Uh, we'll show a little bit of combat with him while I talk about the gameplay. Uh, so survival first. Um, it, it's going to be you know at the beginning of the game it's, it's going to be all about survival, and eventually you're going to kind of grow out of that as you uh, as it becomes easier and easier to survive. Um, but throughout the game, combat's going to play a big role. So you're going to be fighting off enemies to get resources and that kind of thing. So this is meant like a, a mix between Minecraft and the Diablo series. Um, so you're going to be constructing buildings, uh, not as, nearly as much as my, in Minecraft. Um, you know, 2D is harder to do that in the 3D. Um, but uh, there's going to be a lot deeper combat and leveling, and um, hopefully add. Uh, you know, a feeling like the world's alive using simulation. Because that's one thing about Minecraft, you know, you build a big house, but then you don't really feel like you could live in it, you know. Um, so I'll talk more about the uh, vision for the gameplay at the end. Uh, most of what I've done here is investment in the uh, workflow around art, animation, rigging, uh, collision detection, lighting and vision, uh, and the particle system. And if I showed you the uh, lighting vision particle system part. So, none of the characters have any arms or legs. Um, they're all implied. So the arms are implied by the positioning of whatever weapon or tool you're, you're using. The legs are implied just by leaning. So you lean a little bit for, uh, forward if you're walking. You lean way forward if you're running or sprinting. Um, and it's all done with keyframe animation. So we're not defining every single frame in an animation. I'm just defining uh, the important ones, the key frames. Um, and all the frames in between those key frames are generated procedurally. So this requires a whole lot less artwork. Um, and often, you know, the artwork for one key frame and for another are identical. I'm just changing like rotation and that kind of thing procedurally. So take a look at a co some code for a second. I don't expect anyone to understand what's going on here, but the, the takeaway here is that it's very little code to produce one of these animations. Now that I got the system set up, you know, I could animate something in five minutes, which is really, really valuable um, when you're trying to move quickly and you don't have, you know, a team of people behind you. Um, so uh, interesting little side effect, like here, here the wizard has a little pointing animation. Uh, another animation where he lifts his staff above his head, 
but if I point in a particular direction downward here and then I interrupt it with the animation to lift the staff above his head he kind of twirls it as he lifts the staff above his head and I, this it was an une unexpected side effect and I was like oh that's cool why did he do that <laughs> um, but the, the reason for it is uh, the keyframe animation only defines the destination it has nothing to do with uh, your starting point. So if you have different starting points, your path to get to the destination could be different. Um, so that's what's happening when you inter interrupt one animation with another. It kind of improvises, um, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and the keyframe animation lets you do a lot, you know, add a lot of detail for not hardly any work. Um, so here I tried to, you know, show the skeleton have a little draw weight on the bow, and then the bow kind of rocks forward a little bit when he releases an arrow. So you can add a lot of detail without a lot of uh, time investment, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and that's not directly tied into the sprite artist yet, but that might be a future project is to integrate the two. Um, I also integrated the all the, all the cells you see here um, with the animations. I'm calling that the sprites rigging, and part of the rigging is collision detection. Um, so uh, here you can see this in this debug visualization. Um, you can see all the little bubbles uh, for the wizard's collision. Um, and there's a bigger green bubble that's the broad face collision, and the smaller blue bubbles are the, uh, is the narrow face collision. The broad face collision isn't the final answer. It's just, you know, if I don't see it colliding with this outer one, we're not going to even check the inner ones as a, as a performance improving mechanism. Um, something else I uh, improved was the camera control. I found that you know it's nice to have the camera follow you as you're walking around exploring and that kind of thing but in combat if the camera is constantly moving with you it makes it hard to aim at things so you can kind of break that uh, camera following you by mashing your mouse against one of the sides of the screen to pan over a little bit um, and you can't lose your character you can't completely pan away but you can adjust it some and then if your character moves back through the middle of the screen, you can see with this uh, debug visualization, if he moves through the middle of the screen, the camera will lock back onto him and it will start following him again. So hopefully that will be a, uh, an intuitive way to let players kind of have some control over the camera, while at the same time not making them have to do too much work to control the camera. Um, so the last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the gameplay. So. Uh, one of my favorite games is Plants vs. Zombies, the original, not the sequel. Um, and in that game, there's you know simple mechanics. They build up level to level, um, and it never feels boring because they're always you know adding new mechanics, but they're also you know changing scenery and changing the old, the way the old stuff works. You know, it goes from like the daytime stuff to the nighttime, where you have to use the mushrooms instead of the normal plants and that kind of thing. And they throw mini games in between the levels and. It just does an excellent job with pacing. Um, and that's something I wanted to do well in my game, too. Um, so there's different sort of phases of the gameplay. Um, there's like the adventure phase where you're exploring and uh, fighting to and collecting resources. And, you know, you got the moment where like, oh, I found this. That's awesome. Um, and then there's the survival uh, phase of the gameplay where you're, you know, you're trying to not starve and build shelter. And then there's the that flows right into the base building, and the base building is all about um, you know uh, storing your stuff, protecting it, but also like organizing. Like okay, this room's for this, that box is for this type of item, that kind of stuff, and you know just general nesting. You can use the crafting system to make uh, chairs and tables, carpeting, you know anything to make it feel cozy. Um, and I, I want to introduce system of uh, pets too. So there's animals out in the wild, you can try to tame them, uh, bring them back to your base, make a habitat for them, you know, be sure to have enough food to feed them, which increases how much farming you have to do. Um, and so I think that that all together is, those three phases are the, the core of the gameplay. Um, so far, you're very patient, I know this was a long video. Um, so. While I was working on this, you know, there there's days where I felt kind of silly just drawing fireballs <laughs> instead of doing something productive at a company. Um, but I, I got to say, I've really 
enjoyed just getting lost in my own imagination, and I hope I can keep this up. Um, thanks for watching. I'm going to put out more videos soon, probably shorter videos and more frequently. Um, anyway, thanks.